This video will provide some guidelines on citing unusual web-based sources such as business databases, datasets, PowerPoint presentations, and more using APA style. Be sure you've watched the introductory citing web pages video before watching this more advanced one. The web has many unusual sources, both free and subscription, and you may find yourself using them, especially in business research. Generally, you follow the same format as for a regular web page, but sometimes you have the addition of a description in brackets like this after the document title. APA recommends this if it would help with retrieval, whenever your source is not one of the routine web pages, articles, or books commonly used in scholarly research. Often you have to use your best judgment as to when to use the bracketed text and what to put in it. APA gives examples such as these, PowerPoint file, computer software, white paper, blog post, video, audio, tweet, status update, online forum comment. For business examples, we frequently use descriptive texts like industry report, company profile, chart, data set, or others. Finally, notice that these unusual or non-standard business sources often will need the name of the database or hosting organization as the source, and then the URL of either the specific resource if it will resolve for your readers, or the home page of the database product itself if the content could only be retrieved from that one particular database. Let's look first at an example of an unusual resource from the free web. This is a white paper with an obvious named author and title. I downloaded it from the Euromonitor website, which counts as the source or the website that hosts this information. For the retrieval URL, you sometimes have to make a judgment call here. The question is, what would be the most effective URL to get your reader to this source? For this white paper, there is actually not a stable URL where the PDF itself lives. Euromonitor requires a free registration on this page before they would email you the link to download it. So the most useful URL here is probably the page where you would register to get the download link. Here's our completed citation, which actually ends up pretty similar to a simple web page. The only addition is the extra descriptive information, white paper, in square brackets. Euromonitor International is the source, and the URL is the one I mentioned above. Next, let's look at an example of a common business database source. This is an industry profile in our database IBISWorld. The author, date, and title are all pretty obvious near the top. That starts our citation. If a document has an identifying number as part of the title, as this one does, that goes in parentheses after the title, non-italics, because this also isn't a typical article, APA would recommend putting something in square brackets to help describe it. IBISWorld calls this a U.S. Specialized Industry Report, so we'll use that in the square brackets. You'll need to think about what the content is and what short word or phrase best describes it. Finally, for retrieval information, this report can only be retrieved from IBISWorld, but somebody who's not at UW-Whitewater may not have the same access. So first we put the database name in the source position in non-italics, for the URL, the address from the top bar of the web browser when you're in a library database is often not a stable URL. Because this one has a bit about libproxy in it, that means you logged in at some point to get to this content, and it's not going to be a useful URL to anybody not at UWW. So the best option is just to put in the database's home page. You may need to Google for that. So now we have made a complete citation. The same rules apply here as applied for regular web page citations. See especially the date format, include as much of the date as it gives you, and the sentence case capitalization on the title, where you only capitalize the first word and proper nouns, not necessarily the same as the capitalization on the original document. Here are a few more complete citations of business resources. Let me point out a few things. Author. You can have either one or several individual or corporate group authors here too. Date. Include as much of the date as you are given, or N period, D period, for no date if necessary. Italicize the titles of the content and only capitalize the first word and proper nouns. Ford Motor Company is only capitalized because it's the company's proper name. These are all sort of unusual types of information, so they all get some sort of bracketed description. For the Reference USA example, there really is no title, because we created a list in real time and downloaded it as an Excel file. So in the square brackets there, we are allowed to basically make up a title, describe what data you retrieved so somebody else could do the same search. Putting it in square brackets shows that it's not really a formal title. At the end, all of these are subscription databases, so they all have no publicly available retrieval URL. So we just include the database name as the source, and then the URL of the database homepage. However, notice that you don't need to repeat the source name if you already used it for the author, as we did here with LexisNexis. You may have another question here. 
Why do two of these have a retrieval date and the IBIS World and Statista ones did not? The answer is, for the majority of all sources, not just business, APA requires no retrieval date. APA only asks for a retrieval date when information is likely to change frequently and is unarchived. A good example from the web is some social media posts or information like daily stock market updates. In the case of business databases, you have to think about what kind of data are being provided. In these cases, both Reference USA and LexisNexis company profiles have financial data updated every 6 to 12 months, so you definitely want to include when you retrieve those two. But for IBISWorld and Statista, they are archived as PDFs on the page, so that's relatively permanent. This page contains some other useful sources and good examples you might want to check out if you get stuck as you're creating your citations. In particular, check out this page of our Anderson Library APA guide for many more detailed examples of citing business databases. Don't hesitate to contact the library with any questions about citation. We're happy to help.